In this recording session, we're going to have a look at how we can create containers. Containers will allow your students to get instant feedback on their answers, and it's also a fun way of involving um, more auditory uh, responses from your board. So I have a box here which I've created with the Shapes tool, which is going to act as my container. By container I, I mean um, a box or a, a bag, something that we're going to put something in. And I have my objects that I'm going to put in my bag or my container here. Now first of all you can see that I got the objects out after my box. And at the moment my box is on the top layer. So I'm going to come over here to my property browser and pin that in place. I'm going to go to my uh, object browser and I'm going to grab my shape and I'm going to make sure that it's on the bottom so that now my coins will sit inside the box. Okay, the objects that are going to be contained have to be on a higher level, higher layer than the container. Okay, so how do I turn this into a container and create an auditory response so that when the correct answer goes in the box we get a sound to indicate that we've got it right? Well, I go to my property browser, which is the fifth icon along in the object browser, and I should be able to see a menu called container. Now it may be shrunk and it may need you to click the plus for it to open up the options. At the moment this is the object that I'm selecting and I can tell by all of the little circles around the side and this object can contain nothing. Well I'm going to change this now to keyword. The reason I'm going to do that is because with the keywords option you can have it contain as many objects as you like as long as they have this one keyword applied to them. So I'm going to say that it has to contain anything that is made true. So this is a true box. Okay? And um, that means that once, if I label either of these items true, once it's in the box, it will evoke a response to the next thing. Well, what is the response that I would like it to have? Well, I'd like it to make a reward sound, and you can see that here. So instead of false, I'm going to change that to true, and I'm going to choose which sound I want by clicking on this ellipsis. Now this will let you navigate to anywhere you like on your machine. I'm currently uh, in Inspire's Sounds folder and I'm in the Effects folder. And I'm going to choose a beam so it's a bit sci-fi and I'm going to click Open. So now I've told this box to accept any object with the keyword True, which I'm going to copy, and um, the reward sound is going to happen when it's in the right place and it's going to be Beam 01. Okay. So now I need to be able to give these objects, I need to choose which one it is that's going to be. Is it going to be heads or tails? So I'm going to make it tails today. Now at the moment this has a keyword of false, so I'm going to change that to true. And I copied it and I've pasted it back in. That just makes sure that I've got the capitals right, etc. Okay? So now when I place this coin in the box, I get a sound effect. Now if I look at the keywords on this one, this is also set to true. Now because I've used keywords, I can have multiples. So I can put this one in the box, and I'll get my sound effect. If I want it to be tails, all I have to do is take that away and say false, or anything other than true, and now nothing will happen. There's no sound effect. Now to add the keyword in, it's under the identification menu, and again, if that's shrunk, just click the plus and you can add it in there. Okay, so what if I've got the wrong answer and I don't want to just rely on the sounds? What I want to happen is when I put it in the box, I want it to snap back to where it was. Now, it's important that you put the coin or the object where it is that you want it to snap back to because once you do this, the only way to move it again will be to turn off actions with your icon in the top. Otherwise, it will, wherever you put it, if it's not contained, it will snap back to where it is. So to do this, we click on the object, we close, we don't need to go to identification, we need to go to container. Now this isn't a container, this is an object. So I'm not going to tell it to contain anything, but I am, down here, going to change where it says return if not contained to true. So that means that if this object isn't meant to be in this box, it will snap back. So this one will now play a sound and I can move it, or I can place this one in the box and because it doesn't have the keyword true, it will snap back. Now because I've used keywords, I can have any number of objects that I like on here and that will happen. So this one is tails, so if I go to my property browser and my identification, 
change that to true. This one's head, so I'll change that to false. Because I've told this box to only accept things which are true, once I put the head in, nothing will happen, no sound will play. If I put uh, the tails in, I will get a sound. Obviously the difficulty with this tail is it's got a head on it. Okay, so remembering that if I want that false one to snap back, I also have to go to container and change that to true for not contain. Now it will snap back. If I've only got one object, when I click on my container, I can tell it to only contain a specific object. And that will mean that I can then choose with my ellipsis here which specific object I want it to contain, the kangaroo in this case, and now it will get the reward sound for that. And everything else will snap back out as long as it's set to false. The other thing you can use containers for is to change it to anything. And what that means is that you end up with a sticky block. So I'm just going to turn off the sounds in this instance because otherwise, um, whoops, by clicking false here. So for example, I could say to the students, right, I've got two sticky blocks here. There's one. I want you to put all the tails on the sticky block. And now it automatically will group those objects together because it's stuck. It's contained inside the box and I'll be able to move those off the screen for later and pull them back out again. So instead of having to put these on the box, so if I put these on the box, because they're not contained, oh sorry, this is containing anything at the moment, um, it will stick on there. So in that sense, what I could do, you see, is I could have this accept all the trues, and then once they've done that, we can push those off the edge and look at the falses, for example. Or I could have two boxes that contain anything, and as soon as I put something on there, I've got a sticky pad that I can throw things onto and then let them go off the edge of the page. So those are containers. I hope you have fun.